Okay, yay. Good morning. Yay. Hi, sissy. My sister's here. Let's see. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. I see you, May. I'm trying. Yay. <laughs> it works. What time is it with you? I'm in LA, Lauren. I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the same place. Um, That's great. That's great. I mean, technically, we could be in. We should have been in the same room. Uh, are you at uh, the? Um, are you at your? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. Don't give the answer. Okay. Okay. Well, good morning. Good morning. Did I hear you refer to that animal as Big Daddy? Yeah, Big Daddy. Okay. I mean, can you show him to everyone? Yeah. That's big not daddy. a big daddy. Big daddy likes his foot rubbed. Um, <laughs> that's ridiculous. <laughs> Come here, big daddy. How um, are you doing? Your, your eyebrows look amazing. Thank you so much. They're still blonde. It takes a minute for them to not be blonde again. I'm just kind of rolling with it. Um, I like them. I, thank you. Kind of obsessed with it. Um, how was your flight? Was it OK? Um, yeah, I watched scary movies. and. Um, office yeah it was okay I, I can't sleep on on flights but it was okay um, what, do you, what scary movie did you watch the comments as they're coming it's riveting oh it's um it's a whole fucking thing yeah it's just really lovely that all these comments are coming in actually yeah look um, at all these people hi do everyone. you know how to make them smaller yeah i think i made them smaller yeah oh wow hi um Thank you for asking me to do this whole thing. Yeah. I'm talking to yeah. Mae Martin, the musician, right now. No, no, no. There is no such thing. I no. feel, I mean, okay, the context people need to know is I'm a comedian. You're a musician. I love your music. I saw you live in LA the first time I was here. So I really associate you with like my first LA experience. You were so good. And then, yeah, when you asked me to do this, uh, I just can't refuse like an opportunity to be earnest. And but I really have no confidence as as a musician. So it, it's nice when people like make me get out of my comfort zone like that, you know? Yeah, I think that's essential as like a human being and an artist to just like I don't know, feel really really small and like strive to like get yourself to like your own like bigness. Yes, to feel terrible and terrified and then strive to feel differently. <laughs> and then yeah. resilience. Um, yeah. yeah, you know, um, and you go. I, I didn't realize that you you have like a whole collection of Elliot Smith covers that you've done. Like you love you love him, right? Yeah, yeah. Eduardo, my um, Eduardo Rivera, my 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 good pal and um, co writer of my first couple albums and guitarist bestie um we when did we do it i'm like did we do it i think we did it during the pandemic if not like right before we were kind of um we were in like a a label deal and there was just a bit of like a logistical standstill with like releasing music and so we were like we need to be creative and so we did like a doors cover album and an Elliot doors song. cover album yeah and oh, an Elliot song I, heard that. Album. I think they all they both only exist on SoundCloud. Okay. Like, shout out to SoundCloud for just like, because you have to get like license and you know, when you cover songs and it's just so nice to just be like, we did this to like become better producers and better musicians and just kind of like give it. Yeah. Yes. I love Elliot. When did you first get into Elliot Smith? Was that like your teenage years or later? Okay, it was, um, let me think, I was, I was 18 and um, Fred Teasley burned me an Elliot Smith uh, album with like 26 Elliot Smith songs. Nice. Life changing. How about you? Um, 
there was a comedian, like an older comedian. I was, I guess I was 16 and she introduced me to him. And then I went, I went on like a, I went to this cottage with a bunch of comedians who were a lot older than me. And uh, they were all really confident in their bodies and like skinny dipping. And I was this, <laughs> like 16 year old nervous wreck. And I just stayed indoors. There was a vinyl record player. And I just listened to Elliot Smith vinyls. Uh, and, <laughs> yeah, and wrote in my diary. And then, yeah, I think he died the year that I um, left home when I was 16. And so, yeah, I just felt, I, yeah, I just loved his lyrics. And, uh, you know, I was an emo teen. Um, and then I've kept listening and I feel like, um, well, any music that you fall in love with when you're a teenager stays important to you, I think. Yeah. But I feel like I want people to know that not all his songs are depressing. We have chosen the most depressing of his we've songs. We've chosen the most depressing song and we've, we're also here to um, uh, draw some awareness to suicide prevention, but it's, I mean, the contrary is that like, yeah, his songs are not all depressing. His music actually brought brings me out of my depression. Oh, is... I think so. I mean, that's always true. It's cathartic also to, you know, listen to sad music or watch sad movies when you're down. I think yeah. they can be very healing. Yeah. But yeah, that is what really appealed to me when you had this idea was um, the idea of linking it to, I mean, we were gonna put it out earlier during like Mental Health Awareness Month and things like that. Which was days ago. Days ago. <laughs> yeah, Days we're ago. still, we can we still, just we're still missed in it. Hey, we're yeah. Great. Um, yeah, because I've, I've, I've lost a lot of friends this year to, to suicide, like four friends since January, young, young people. And I think people are really struggling post pandemic, maybe and not, maybe we don't realize that that's happening still, because life moves on. But um, particularly my male friends. Um, so I'm always interested in, in men's mental health and um, yeah, anytime you can remind people that there are resources and like people to talk to and um, yeah. Don't you think? Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. I, I tend to like lick my wounds in private and turn to art. Um, but I think it is, there's been moments where um, I'm reading this uh, Beth Pickens book, Make Your Art No Matter What. And she said something um, like sometimes um, the brain, the, the thoughts that got you in can, aren't, aren't the thoughts that can get you out. Like your brain that got you into the space can get you out. And so I will like snap out of something and be like, I need to go to um, turn to a friend and talk to somebody. I think it's extremely important to not stay in your, your echo chamber. Yeah, it's so tempting to just stay indoors. It um, is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, but we, we've really lost a, a lot of community and, and stuff, so it, it's, yeah, it's good to, to get out. I mean, live music is happening again. That must have been really intense for you to suddenly have your, your livelihood taken away. Yeah, yeah. You were, that, that... Weren't you about to tour and then it, it got... Yeah. Yeah, we had like just released an album and had like five months of touring. Um, that was so intense. What was it like for you? Yeah, uh, yeah, the same. It was the, it's the longest I've gone without doing stand up since I was about thirteen. So it was like, yeah, yeah, relearning how to spend time by myself. And but I was lucky. I made I made my show feel good during the pandemic. So I was lucky. I got to be around people and and uh, busy and working. So yeah. Yeah, I can see people commenting. Uh, Relax, May. Your hair is okay. It's because I keep touching. That's so weird. I honestly did you see that? Yeah, I haven't been see here. I'll, I'll start messing with my hair, and then we'll just kind of make it. <laughs> Look at the view. Uh, can I show you the view from my? Clean it out. Wait, where is it? I want to show you. That's gorgeous. Can't really see, but the hot. May, are you going to move to time. LA? Do you just love it out here? I think I might. You know, I think I might. I mean, I mean, right now I'm here for the foreseeable future. I'm here until like February and I do really like it. And it's been so nice, like making music and doing cool artistic stuff with people like you. Um, I love having you here. I like being like, hey, real hard, real, real hard hitting question for real. What are you doing on November 17th? Oh, 
hanging out with you? Why? What are you doing? I'm playing my next show in LA and you should, we should. We should. I, I think I, I have it in my calendar, actually. Do you? Yeah, I, I do. Thinking, yeah. I'm, I'm doing it at um, like a social club and I'm going to do like, um, I'm going to bill it as like, um, I'm just going to bring up a bunch of collaborators and make it like less about me and more about the people that I think are super special and we should do that's, this song. That's a and great I idea. I also would love you to do another one of my Largo shows. Uh, and we still have to do our desert festival. We, we still have to do a desert festival at Pappy's, yeah. Yeah, we want to go to the desert. I'll yeah. do stand up, you do music, and we make people come for a whole weekend. And uh, in my mind, it becomes a kind of sex comedy, but that's <laughs> what if What if you did music and I did comedy? Oh my God, Lauren, your stand up would be so <laughs> good. You have a lot to say. I do, and also like, and also nothing all at the same time. Um, I, I save jokes though. I, I should try them out on you. Actually, that yeah. makes me so nervous. Actually, I'll show you. Yeah, all yeah. you have to do to get a million laughs is bring that dog on stage. Oh, bring, isn't he just a bomb? Just bring Big Daddy on stage. Big Daddy, Big Daddy, no whammy, Big Daddy. Look at this rum. That's insane. He, he's a Big Daddy for sure, for sure. Um. So where can people donate if they like if they listen to our song and they like it? Right. So I've tagged the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention in the posts. Um, there are so many. Uh, I think you froze you for me. Yeah. Um, also, there's uh, there's helplines and. Yes, people should reach out to, you know, if you don't have people in your life that you want to talk to, reach out to professionals. There's better help, which is like, it will pair you with an online uh, therapist. Sometimes it's like a big hurdle to just, you know, go out and find a therapist. Also, just financially, it's a hurdle and things like better help make it a lot more accessible. Um, and also, yeah, make music, get your guitar out. Um, do you, can you tell that I'm really good at doing these? You're what? These Instagram lives. Can you tell that I'm really, really good at doing Instagram lives? I'm um, not, not good at them. I don't know, um, what to do. Um, can't stop reading the comments. So, maybe we'll hop in. Let's, an let's answer our question. Let me pop in here. Oh well, yeah, I mean, um, my comments are frozen, but yeah, does anyone have any questions? It's am good. I frozen right now? I'm in, the, I'm in the questions. A question for both of you. Which was the craziest or nicest moments you had on Total Fans? These are great. Um, what was that question? Oh, this one's a really sweet one. Okay, um, we'll, we'll, we'll do both of these. First, maybe this one first. How to be kind with ourselves and admit we are artists even with lack of confidence. How can we be kind to ourselves? I kind of like that. What's your... Um, What's your check-in? Like, let me be kind to myself. Huh. Well, you always say it's important to suck your own dick. And I really <laughs> like that. Yeah. It's definitely I like important that to suck your own dick. Um, um, <laughs> yeah. I think um, um, if, if your internal monologue is saying things to you that you would never say to a friend or loved one, like, because it's too harsh, then check yourself before you wreck yourself. I think also... Uh, we put so much of our self-worth is tied up with our work and, and stuff and it's important to not let that those proportions get um warped you know yeah well, my mom yeah, was just like treat myself like i would treat my friend yeah yeah totally yeah. there's a word there's a hindu word called genshai which means it's a it's a quality where you never make anyone else feel small including yourself and I love the including yourself part because it's, yeah. When you walk into a room at a party, it's really easy to be like, well, I'm the worst person here, but yeah. wouldn't do that to someone else, you know? Yeah. Um, May I'm just gonna interview for you. This, this is what this is turning into. Um, <laughs> these questions are so sweet, you guys. And you're going to talk about Elliot Smith cover. Have either of you heard of Worth the Red, um, let me see. I have a suicide prevention program I could use to help maybe, okay, great. 
Um, yeah, that's awesome. Someone is saying that they know of some suicide prevention programs. They'd love to DM me. I'll share that in my stories after this. Um, here's a kind of an unrelated question, but it could be cute. Uh, a question for both of you, which was the craziest or nicest moments you've had with fans on tour? Oh. Take it away. Um, uh, um, I like so many, every show. I, I always try and talk to people after, um, after shows and hug people and take, and yeah, people are so, I think in general, just people are so kind. I like when people say they've connected, connected. To, to something. Oh, I guess I had I, I have a lot of parents bring their kids, and I've had kids come out to their parents in front of me, like, like uh, kind of 18-year-olds bringing their parents, and then after the show, I, I'm saying hi to everyone, and they say to their parents, I'm, I'm queer, and that's nice. I mean, I'm not a licensed family therapist, so I'm always a little worried it's going to explode, and I'm going to have to be mediating, but no, it's, it's always gone very well. Yeah. What about that's you? So yeah, just um, just the, I don't know. I like, I like skin on skin contact. I love hugging. I love like, I'm like, how do I say this without sounding so, you know, uh, sucking my own dick? But just like when someone's like, hey, your lyrics changed my life, or helped me get through this, or that's why I have like a hard time when I'm releasing a song. You're supposed to like make a quote and give it to your publicist and kind of force feed. The, the message of the song like down people's throats and I hate that part I wish yeah. that yeah and I get it you need it to like there needs to be a blurb and interviewers need like something to go with or however the system works I'm still figuring it out I guess um but I love when someone's like you know when you said this and it meant this and I will I'll be like that's like what it meant for them and it helped them get through something but it meant something completely different for me it also just makes me feel like we're all just I don't know, we're all just in our own universes, just trying, and it's just, it then we're leads to trying. better. We're, we're all just trying to survive. No one asked to be born, and I think it's really, um, I don't know. My it's friend, uh, I have a friend called Charles Watson who does music, who's amazing, and I did a song with him, and I was like, man, this is such an amazing song about trans rights. And he was like, it's not about that. I was like, exactly. Oh. Right, to me it was fully about like the trans experience, but he was like, he was like, that's so cool. And, and he was like, it definitely can be if you want it to be. Yeah, you should have just been like, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, that's a perfect example. Should we do a few more questions and then I gotta I got yeah. go to work pretty soon. Okay, great. Um, oh, sweet. Uh, who is the person? like a celebrity that inspires you the most? Oh, that's a weirdly tough question. There's, there's many. Um, hmm. I'm going to say Elliot Smith. Yeah, Elliot Smith. Well, yeah, with my writing. Yeah, yeah, lyrically and melodically. Um, but <clears throat> um, there's loads. My friend Emma Corrin inspires me because they're so, uh, I think they're very brave and confident. Elliot Page inspires me. Um, Lisa Kudrow inspires me because she's so funny. And uh, oh, who, who else? Esther Perel, Esther Perel. I just was um, oh, our, our mutual bride. Like I yeah. just Googled um, who her husband is. I wanted to see what her husband looks like. And at first I was like, no one's good enough for her. And then I watched. No, this. no one is worthy. No one's worthy of her. That's like a foundational truth. But then I, I like watched. Like 13 different languages. Like. It's the same. But. Um, Brilliant. Her husband is very cool. So that's fine. But yeah. Okay. Uh, Gabor Mate, Dr. Gabor Mate has a new book out called um, The Myth of Normal. And he's just an amazing Canadian. He was a physician and, and works with communities affected by addiction and trauma. And now he's kind of a, a thinker and he writes these books that connect a lot of like everything from politics to health and um, the world we live in and how to navigate it. So yeah, I'd say him. Yeah. That's great. Um, 
Yeah. What, a lot of uh, Lauren, what am I seeing you? When am oh, I sorry. seeing you? Sorry, no, wait. Wait, who, who inspired you? I gave you? a quick answer. I said Elliot Smith, but it's, yeah, it, his, like, it's more about just like his, uh, how vulnerable he gets. Yeah. Makes kind of, it was also around a time that I was playing a lot of, I was writing music. I had just like started in my late teens. And um, yeah, and also his guitar tunings because uh, I don't really, I have my imposter syndrome is with my guitar playing. We all oh. have it like in our, in our category. And so I'm like, I'm like a C plus guitar player on like good days. But it's really fun because I'll teach myself like a certain finger picking pattern or certain shapes. And then like, that's all I know. And then Elliot has all these wild different like tunings mm. and it just has completely opened m my relationship up with myself and with uh, seeing myself as a better guitarist, even though I'm just cheating, it's just a different tuning. Um, <laughs> nice. But also the producers that I work with, I get so inspired. I, I can't work with somebody who isn't, who isn't just like open to like, you know, the throwing wet noodles at the wall, seeing what sticks. Claire Morrison, Matt Linish, David Davis, who recorded Twilight, our cover. Um, I love, yeah, all the music, yeah. I don't have, I mean, yeah, celebrities totally, but like, it's more so like, you inspire me, like, you gotta hang around with people that um that are doing cool shit and are, are being authentic. I was wondering out with people who go. Oh yeah, authenticity, vulnerability is very cool and admirable. I like weirdos and losers. I don't like anybody trying to be cool. Um, yeah. I, somebody asked, what's your favorite Elliot Smith song? I think that's too hard. I, I think like, at the moment, I'm listening to Pitsula a lot. I really love Pretty Mary Kay. I like Tomorrow Tomorrow. Um, and I like, I, I mean, he doesn't have a bad song. It's it's not a bad song. It's crazy. And they're yeah. always, for some reason, it always feels like there's more to discover. You got it. You guys got to yeah. get into it. Yeah. Especially listening to him now for like a steady, like 10, 15 years, like, I'm sure you go back to it and you have like a completely different experience. You're like, oh, I'm, I'm hearing new words or I'm hearing it differently. Do you yeah. have that? Is that just me? Totally. King's yeah. I'm about to sneeze. I'm so sorry. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I'm going to sneeze. Wait, just it's one, two, four. <laughs> Wait, it oh, went away. Yeah. I want to sneeze so bad. <laughs> it just went Making away. My nose burn. Um, oh. Angel in the Snow was like one, it was the second song I heard. Um, Needle in the Hay was the first song I heard of Elliot Smith's still take me, like transport me back. Yes, completely. Um, okay, great. I think, Dude, did, thank you. <laughs> Go. Did we do it? I think did we, we did it. I think we did thank an Thank you so much for covering this with me. Thank you for making art with me. Y'all, I hope I heard. Continues. We gotta do more stuff together and uh, do our desert festival and also As long as you say yes, it will happen. Y'all, I heard May's cover. Um you remind me of your friend's name again of the song that you did. It was his song oh, that you sang. Watson. Yeah, Charles Watson going Yeah. And I was just like Okay. And then I kind of like was like, So when when can we sing together? Um, we gotta do I so many more. Um, me, okay, well, I see you next. A modern day Robert Plant. You're me. Yes, you're Janis Joplin. You're Robert Plant. I love watching you sing. It's crazy. You have such um, such an instrument there in your throat. You're very kind. I appreciate coming you. from your your guts. You know. Oh, sometimes sometimes I watch videos of me being on stage and I'm like, I don't know who she is because I kind of, it's the only time I, in life I That's walk so out a little bit. Yeah. Um, but back to you. <laughs> like, I can't, can't take okay. it. Um, Have a good okay, day. I will see you. You just, you just got here. You're in LA. Um, I'm so I love to leave for right. tour. Yeah, I feel like you back? you're about to go on tour. Everybody get tickets to see Lauren on tour. Uh, I'll be at as many shows as I can be at. You gotta go. Um, I'll see you when I get back. Yeah, I'll see you very soon. Thanks for hanging out with me. Bye. I miss you, buddy. I miss you too. And I, wait. I'll see you soon. Thank Can you, everybody. Bye, Orson. In. Yeah. Bye. Bye, Orson.
<laughs> Bye. All right, babe, I'll talk to you soon.